depression in my life whatsoever. Literally none. I, I, uh, I have sadness and joy and elation and satisfaction and gratitude beyond belief, but all of it is weather. And it just spins around the planet, you know? It, it's not, it doesn't sit on me long enough to kill me. Most of us live uh, trapped or lost in the movement of thought. Sometimes I've, I've spent two hours of my day thinking about one person I resent, you know, and going through orations and, you know, if he ever says this, I'll say that and, and all of those things. And, and you go, I, I find myself now when I get caught up in something like that, becoming conscious suddenly and going, oh, wait, I'm here. I'm not with that person right now. I'm creating things that don't even exist, you know, and it's useless. It's time badly spent. I don't know what painting teaches me. I, I know that it just frees me. Free from the future, free from the past, free from regret, free from worry. Something inside you is always telling a story. I believe every single thing that you see and hear is talking to you. You know, the bottom line with all of this, whether it's performance or it's art or it's sculpture, is love. We want to show ourselves and have that be accepted. I love being alive, and the art is the evidence of that. My father was not only the funniest man in the room, but he was a fantastic saxophone player. And before I was born, he had an orchestra in Toronto. But, you know, in order to be something special, you had to leave Canada and come down to the States and prove yourself in the States. He was a little bit afraid of that transition. And, and also he had a family to take care of, so he became an accountant. And uh, as time wore on, it wore him down, you know? It wore him down and he got a little bit bitter, especially when he lost his job when he was 51. Uh, that really broke him. Not only was he compromising to raise a family, but when you compromise and you fail, it really hurts. It hurts even more than failing at what you love. So that was an example for me. And a lot of people don't know this, but, uh, but when I was about 14 or 15, my father lost his job and I actually became homeless for quite some time. Uh, of course, I grew up in Canada, so I thought we had just gone camping, you know? <laughs> Uh, uh, I learned that you can dark. fail at what you don't love, so you might as well do what you love. There's, there's really no choice to be made. <sighs> what you want to be, you know? It's like my old man didn't get to see everything, but he saw it happen, and it's happened for him as much as it did for me. You know, so that's so why I get emotional. Everybody gets emotional when they talk about their dad, but, but, uh, but he truly was a, a frigging amazing human being. I did a lot of comedy, and I did political stuff, and, I, and that was all great, and then I just kind of slowed down and started talking about uh, the River of Tears that we all have to face and uh, eventually and that we're all avoiding and how at the other side there's, you know, that your body can survive it but you can't. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and it's you're better off without a you or an I. Mm -hmm. And I got into that pretty heavily and they were looking at me like, oh, um, this isn't what you're supposed to say. <laughs> right. You know, you're supposed to say, you know, we're important, 
You're yeah. supposed to say, it's all going to be all right. Mm. And you're supposed to say uh, that, you know, whatever you dream can come true. Mm. And you're supposed to say all those things. I do believe in manifestation, power mm. of that kind of stuff. But I don't believe that any of it matters. Mm. I, I believe that I had to become a famous, you know, idea. Yeah. Uh, and get all the stuff that people dream about and uh, accomplish a bunch of uh, a bunch of things that uh, you know that that look like success in order to give up my attachment to those things mm. it's been a part of the evolution of uh, ego is is to uh, spend your f uh, first half of your life acquiring and adding thinking you can add to yourself mm -hmm. and and it looks great. I mean, it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes, and mm -hmm. you know, and you're uh, and you've done something that people admire. But it can never fulfill you. You can never be happy. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not where happiness comes from. And you know, I dealt with depression, you know, a few years ago, and people still think, well, he's going through. You can tell he's depressed, and mm -hmm. it's not. I have no depression in my life whatsoever. Literally none. I I uh, I have sadness and joy and elation and satisfaction and gratitude beyond belief, mm. but all of it is weather and mm. it just spins around the planet. You know, yeah. it, it's not it doesn't sit on me long enough to kill me. Do you have a happy place? <laughs> <laughs> Besides it, here, it, there's just <laughs> everywhere. Just there's just everything. The happy place is realizing that you're everything, you know, and that there's no real you involved in the first place. There's so much good in the world. I always, I always say to everybody, I'm amazed when people go like, ah, the world is insane, man. It's crazy. It's out of control. It's like people are completely nuts like that. I look at this room and I see, what, five, six hundred people. Not, no one is bashing each other over the head. I am amazed at that. I am totally impressed with you people. <laughs> Seriously, we live on a planet where we're very crammed together and I think we do really well. It's just that when we, when we watch the news and we watch entertainment, it's about people's conflicts tied together in the most exciting possible way. And you imagine that the world is this explosive, horrifying place. And the news is all this negativity condensed, you know, and it's, it really is not representative of what the world is or what the world wants.